Hi everyone! So today I want to talk about my new autumn palette. I'm so excited about this palette. It's a very different way um, of how I put it together compared to all of the other palettes that I did in the past, the custom palettes. And I feel like all of my um, years of playing around with watercolor have given me enough knowledge um, or the knowledge that I needed to put this palette together and I will explain later what I mean. So uh, today is a different setup. I wonder if you notice it or not. I cannot film on the desk because the desk is actually that way and it's by the, uh, so you can see the different shadow today, um, by the window which is in the morning time. I have very little time now to film so I have to use every second that I have. And um, yeah, our son started school, it's a very slow start, so we went from having a decent, or me particularly, uh, have a decent time to work every day to basically nothing at all almost. And that's why I decided to still film, but move everything to a little foldable IKEA table, which is sold with like a tray. And so I hold my art supplies on it usually and um, then I can remove that tray and have the space, extra space if I need to. So let's dive into this. And I wanted to show you a couple of things and talk you through. So this is where it all began. So this palette um, showcases the colors that I wanted to have in my um, palette. So I wanted to create like moody pinks or shall I say more kind of muted pinks and then I wanted to have some lovely skin tones. I wanted to have pastels, I wanted to have granulating colors, I wanted to have shimmering colors and um, what else? Color-wise, uh, mustards pinks like I said but more on the muted side and um, I wanted some muted turquoises which I played around here and then I wanted some muted greens which I tried here there's actually a video um, this is not what I wanted for my palette but it ended up the mixes ended up looking like um, Green Appetite Genuine and Serpentine Genuine. I'll try to link it in the card up here if you wanted to see how I mix those. And that is it. So that was sort of the initial idea that I had. So then moving on, here are some of the greens that I mixed for that video that I just mentioned. And here are the greens that I tried to mix um, for my moody granulating greens. And I think they're just really really beautiful so initially I thought maybe I'll just mix it into a half pan and have a ready color to go um, but it was sort of um, difficult with the granulating medium because um, to get to to achieve to get that granulation you have to use a lot of that granulating liquid which makes it um, a consistency of almost like an ink acrylic like a wash and so it's so thin and so watery that it would be very hard to get it dried in a half pan um, so therefore then I decided to go for the plan B which is just um, adding certain colors to my palette where I can then mix them together so this is what I've done here. I will explain what I've done there. Um, then I had all the colors. If you remember, I did like a little sneak peek at one point. Um, that's the order that the colors were in. Um, I really like sort of looking at the colors because when they're shuffled, I find that the colors set off one another really well and they sort of provide contrast and therefore the colors pop a lot more. Um, however, for using or for the practicability of it, it's quite um, uh, unfriendly for me personally. I find it absolutely confusing looking at colors that are shuffled in my palette, um, although I might find them beautifully 
uh, beautiful when they're swatched out. So for that reason I had to organize them um, and I thought the better thing to do would be to break them down into pastels and shimmers which worked really well because I had enough colors to fit in the top row. Then the second row I decided to make uh, the granulating colors and then the final row is just sort of regular colors that don't really granulate uh, they're not really pastels or they don't really shimmer so anything in between basically went into the third um, space and also what I did is I organized the colors um, within the same sort of color range starting um, new so um, I have that way all the greens in this corner and then um, some neutrals and things like that. So they might look quite unusual for, for a palette as you can see, especially these three colours, but I love how they pop together these pastels. So I didn't want to put the green and the purple at the end, which I could have done by putting them down here somewhere. I wanted them to be like that, but who knows, I might change my opinion or my um, liking but that's that's what I've done here so initially I swatched them out and I had two spaces to fill and um, I knew I wanted to add the buff titanium and the titanium white because that gives me a fantastic option to mix very beautiful pastel colors with any color that I want on top of the ready kind of you know pre-mixed colors here ready to go so I've added two of those colors and then um, swatching them out here when I played around somewhere here I thought the colors looked differently or enough that there were enough difference to include both of them I found that Schmincke Rutal yellow was more opaque more kind of milky and then the I think my Marie Blue Naples Yellow had a bit more transparency to it and it's got more of like um, like a brighter yellow and this one looked a bit more muted but when I swatched them out here they looked so similar that I thought there's just no point for me having both so I took the Schmincke Rutal Yellow out for another occasion and what else? Yeah, quite a few of those colors are actually the colors that um, Irit sent me in the half pen exchange that we did. So uh, I will talk you through which ones those are. I have a swatch out video of all the half pens that Irit sent me. I don't know if that video is going to be going before this one or after. So we'll see. But um, then I had just a few minor um, changes here and the changes were basically um, I also decided to take out this color which is a um, like a shimmering color that ruby something um, again that Irit sent me let's see this one here so that was the iridescent ruby by Daniel Smith I thought I didn't have to have it and I could add another color that was a lot more vivid and I thought I was missing like a good red in this color palette so I decided to go for Deep Scarlet which immediately provides a great pop and it's as intense as the um, what's it called Naftamide Maroon so I thought that's a great option as well as mis uh, using it on its own um, it's a deep deep red it's not bright but it sort of has this um, you know beautiful autumnal um, look to it and then for mixing it with other colors it also provides a big variety of possibilities there the next thing that I was contemplating was this cascade green which I really wanted to include it in the palette but wasn't sure as it sort of is a little bit different to other colors um, it is in a way granulating and it is color separating so um, it's quite out there it's got turquoise in there it's got like a deep dark green with some sort of brown in there um, but it's a beautiful color and again this color is probably similar and this one both were sent by Irid and they have a bit of pigment separation there which is beautiful so this one is dusk pink 
by Rembrandt and this one is that beautiful something genuine hold on hematite scarlet burnt genuine so this color right here and that's that Rembrandt dusk pink here so yeah they kind of um, work together so those three colors with the range of separation um, yeah and the other thing I was contemplating is the these two colors they look kind of very very similar um, one is roasted French ochre and this is Sedona Genuine both by Daniel Smith but to be honest with you I love them so much that I wanted to keep both of them and you can see on this swatch they look slightly different I see the Sun is starting to creep in here let me just fix that okay so um, you like, like I was saying I think on this swatch they come through a little bit different and then also um, they have beautiful um, qualities to them that I feel are different enough for me to include them so that's where I was at and then I decided to like I said arrange them in the order that felt quite sort of nice for me so I've done the first row here and then I have the second row so the first row as I said is has it has pastels up to buff titanium and then here we have all the shimmers and then in the second row we have kind of all these beautiful skin tones and I wanted them in sort of next to each other and then I have all the other beautiful colors as well so all of them have granulating properties and then the final row has that white because I originally wanted to have it here but it wouldn't fit in so I'd had to kind of replace uh, one of the shimmers which I didn't want to do um, and yeah so basically I decided to stick the white in the bottom there and then we have these sort of pinks red oranges and yellows going into greens and then I swapped these two colors so we will do the proper um, swatch out today so that I have it all as it is right now but basically this is the color palette um, of the swatches as they are if I wanted to use them straight from the half pan now I also went ahead and swatched out a few of my favorite um, combinations which I want to show you before we swatch out this palette so let me um, show you a couple of things so what we have here is actually I wrote it all down so I can read it all up in case I forget so the first one I started like that so I went the other way around um, the first one here the aim was to create a kind of mustardy um, green type of a color and so this color I achieved by mixing the Schmincke uh, yellow raw ochre with Mijello leaf green so these two also what I find quite useful is to see how the colors move into one another and in some cases I found something really beautiful like in this case here there um, this is quite pretty as well and this one and this one so a few of them actually um, have an interesting merge into one another which is very useful to know because you then can use that technique straight on paper the two swatches next to it is um, I've done swatching them in in the lid of the palette and um, that gives you a kind of you know very um, gradual mix so it's it's a clean mix in in the sense that it's not going to have bits and pieces of you know watercolor not properly mixed if you do it on a watercolor paper that can happen um, on the paper straight on the paper I mean okay let's move on to this mix um, this is very pretty as well um, so we have burnt sienna and my one is from from Rembrandt with Holbein lilac so this is the color that was quite useful for the mix because there was this beautiful color that I managed to mix with it if I can show you so it's this color right here and um, there we go this color and it's also here 
So it's very difficult to explain. It's between a nude and a muted pink, that sort of a thing, but I love it. In the pencil range, it probably would be similar to that. Um, let's see. Yes, it's similar to that Burn Sienna 50%, I'd say, um, if you wanted to know roughly. Okay, so then the next color we have um, is this one here, which is Shinhan Perfect Grey with Rembrandt Burn Sienna again. Here we have, I was aiming for muted turquoises, and then um, I've got the... Um, Schminke Mars Black with Schminke Cobalt Turquoise and I think this color really reminds me of Sleeping Beauty uh, by Daniel Smith. Then we have the Daniel Smith Cascade Green and Schminke Cobalt Turquoise so that kind of takes the Cobalt Turquoise into a more greener area and it becomes less sort of bright but has an interesting granulation from the cascade green then let's go back to the top um, i really love these sort of colors because these all four of these or actually all five of them i have used shimmering colors and i wonder if i bring it up close whether you could see that so yeah, they just look gorgeous. Having shimmer um, options in your palette means that you can create a lot of interesting things. So here we have the that Dusk Pink by Rembrandt and the Burned Bronze Eye Genuine. So I love this color in mixing as well as using on its own. You can see beautiful colors here uh, because you have the granulation and you have the shimmer and the, also the pigment separation. So there's a lot of interesting stuff going on here. Then next one we have Naphtamide Maroon and again Burnt Bronzite Genuine, beautiful color. And then I also tried it with the Deep Scarlet and I had these beautiful options here. Next one, I decided to change it up a little. And so this is the Daniel Smith Go Fight with Okay, so the camera got full, I don't know at which point, but I'll repeat this color here, which is the Daniel Smith Gothite, uh, which is a brown ochre, with red fuchsia by Daniel Smith as well. It creates beautiful skin tones, which have these sort of um, perfect blush or bronzer colors, if you were into creating a bit of um, makeup. And... Um, then we're moving on to something slightly more different, but it's also really interesting actually. So this color here is um, Schminke Chromium Oxide Green, which I have a whole tube of and haven't used much of, but it's a really pretty color. I mean, it's really interesting and it's perfect type of a green for autumn palette because it has that um, opacity to it, that milkiness. Um, and it's um it's an interesting tone so it's this one here i don't know if you can pick up on the color let me move it closer so it is quite beautiful on its own um but also within mixing um you can create nice bit of granulation and then i mixed it together with the sujulite genuine uh, which is that sort of purpley dusky kind of um, shimmery color so it creates interesting almost sort of grays it um, a little bit and then the granulation and again the um, shimmer comes through beautifully okay swiftly let's move on to this color here which is Sodalite Genuine and Viridian together now they create another beautiful option for turquoises um, which is also very, very beautiful. It's got a huge interest in these sort of variety of colors. You could obviously mix them to a whole more um, bigger range of, of colors, 
but I'm just giving two options. Basically, I haven't explained, but what I do here is I mix equal amount for the first swatch and then for the second swatch, I always add a little bit more of the this color here. So whatever color is on the right, and that's how I get to these colors and these colors, okay? So let's move on to the next one. This is beautiful and um, I mixed here Daniel Smith Hematite Burn Scarlet Genuine which I will totally be buying a full tube or uh, like a big tube of when I run out of this half pan because it's a gorgeous color. So I mixed it here with a uh, with the Shinhan Purple Grey and that's a bit of an unusual mix because if you look at the if you look at the colors, um, this is it. It sort of almost looks like it would be one of those colors, you know, kind of really milky and opaque. It's, um, it doesn't feel too milky, but it has that beautiful creamy kind of finish. Um, now combining that with something that's super granulating and has a beautiful pigment separation is, um, it's very interesting. I say pigment separation, these are meant to be uh, natural or dug up from the ground. Next one here we have the Daniel Smith Olive Green with Fuchide. So that's um, a very interesting light green uh, that you can take it to and add a little bit of shimmer if you wanted to. And then we have, and obviously if you didn't want the shimmer but you like this tone, what you would do is go for one of the either Viridian or Cobalt color and try to really water it out to get it to such a light color. And then you would have a similar look but without the shimmers, obviously. Next one we have Luna Red Rock, which is very um, opaque. This is this color here. It's gorgeous. It's... um. um it has like a chalky feel but in a in a beautiful way. It's very different to all of the other colors that I have here um, but I, I, I love it. It's a very interesting color, great for skin tone. So that I decided to combine with the Viridian and they neutralize each other quite well. So you could get a warm toned gray or like a um, turquoise gray but more muted if you compare it to the other turquoises that we have here. And then finally we have Aussie Red Gold, that's a very pungent orange in the palette. And I could not not include it because it's like, it has became uh, my favorite orange, although before that I had the Schmincke Transparent Orange, which is also very bright, but I feel that this one um, has beautiful qualities to it. It's sort of the color is not flat um, in the wash. It's um, It's got a lot of depth to it. And then here I combined it with the Holbein Lilac and came out with something quite interesting. So.